Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had, had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. She gave her he gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Please read together Psalm 23, found in your bulletin, or on page 612 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He guides my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table. shall follow me all the days of my life, 
A reading from the Revelation to St. John the Divine. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in thy Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. (laughs) 
The image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd has become such a part of the Christian vo vocabulary that it hardly ever gets unpacked. Pardon my use of a worn out expression, unpacked. As we gather this morning with a substantial amount of shepherd imagery before us, we might need to consider what lies behind this cozy, bucolic portrait from the popular Christian imagination. There may indeed be some things out there that we've never considered. We know why Jesus is referred to as the Good Shepherd. That is quite clear in our Gospel text. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. There's a shepherd-to-sheep relationship here, one that will never be broken. Furthermore, Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. The good shepherd cares for his sheep so much that they are under his permanent protection and care. In short, that's the mark of any good shepherd. Yet despite today being commonly called Good Shepherd Sunday, that particular combination of words, good and shepherd, never appears in our gospel text. One must read the earlier passages of the 10th chapter of John's gospel to find that exact image. We are perhaps led to assume an implied Good Shepherd motif in today's text. Those of greater scholarly acumen may be better equipped to tackle that matter, but I needn't bother you with such nitpicking in a form such as this. What really makes me stop and think is this idea of compare, comparing Christ's followers to sheep in the first place. Sheep aren't terribly smart and often need rather assertive guidance from the shepherd. So in that light, the comparison of us to sheep isn't particularly flattering. And even the bright side of the matter isn't so bright. Sheep are, at their best, blindly obedient and incapable of making thoughtful decisions on their own. I'm thinking that perhaps Jesus never intended this comparison as a compliment. And we needn't get into the matter of sheep not smelling very good either. Instead of trying to come to definitive and conclusive statements about sheep, let us turn our attention to the shepherd. He is the one with the voice we recognize, and he is the one who will keep us unto eternal life. Looked at this way, the sheep's lack of intelligence, inability to make its own decisions, and unpleasant body odor don't seem to matter much anymore. It is the shepherd who matters. The shepherd matters because he is the only one who can lead us through life's darkest and most difficult passages. When there seems to be no light and only obstacles, it is the shepherd's voice that we can hear and be led to safety and peace of mind, body, and soul. But the shepherd is not merely the gentle, bearded companion of the world of Christian popular art. He also challenges us to follow him right into life's darkest and most difficult passages in his calling to take up the cross, especially when we may not know where that cross may take us. And yet, if the shepherd calls you to the meanest streets or the darkest alleys, he will still be with you. But what about the times in which we are simply left clueless, when we are, in fact, not a whole lot different from the none-too-bright actual sheep who roam the pasture? Those of us who aren't experts in geopolitical affairs or military strategy often find ourselves feeling helpless, for example, as we watch what continues to go on in Ukraine. 
What we might get in this case from common ordinary sheep is a lesson in humility. It is far too easy to foist our unbridled wrath onto, onto Vladimir Putin, as justified as that might be, when that might not exactly help those on the ground in Ukraine who are suffering the most. There are bad shepherds, too, who can rouse our tempers and rile up our emotions, but they are, in fact, so crafty that their will might be done instead of the good shepherd's will. Let us not use the name of Jesus to rouse tempers and rile emotions. It wasn't the good shepherd's style either. He seeks only to be present with his flock in times like these, and he calls out to his sheep when they long for guidance and security. And a righteous judge will do the work that the good shepherd didn't do. The good shepherd's flock will recognize his voice when they seek real justice instead of mere retribution. They will recognize his voice when they start asking questions instead of pretending to have all the answers. They will recognize his voice when they are moved from idle contemplation to constructive action. Martin Luther, once a favorite religious reformer of mine, envisioned as one of the means of the gospel something he called mutual conversation and consolation of the brethren, which in its broadest sense encompasses everyone from Ukraine to Warsaw, Indiana, and everywhere in between. So as we think of how we recognize the shepherd's voice, may our response to his call include conversation with and consolation of suffering and grieving people through whatever means possible in Ukraine and anywhere else people are suffering and grieving. We may not be able to hop on a plane to Ukraine tomorrow, but we can always be local agents of God's global grace. And yes, the shepherd may occasionally yank a little too firmly with his staff, but we are not animals, so there's no calling the ASPCA. Often this may be just the sort of correction that we need. Any good shepherd wants to keep all his sheep in the fold, and sometimes the ones that stray might feel the firm pull of his staff. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, though. It's just Jesus saying, get back here. As we celebrate the resurrection in these weeks of Easter, may we remember, too, the treasure that awaits all who are members of the shepherd's flock. As he declares, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. This is the promise of the resurrection that is the inheritance of all who believe in the crucified and risen one. If the shepherd is leading us anywhere, it is ultimately to eternal life with him. And let us always remember that the real good shepherd cannot be limited to the imagery of Christian popular art. Jesus is so much more than anything that could possibly be portrayed in a picture. He transcends our expectations, confounds our imaginations, and pours an infinity of grace upon us. Moreover, his is the one voice we can always recognize, even when we cannot understand it. But where understanding fails, Faith and trust come into the rescue. They say yes, in spite of our doubt, cynicism, and uncertainty. And that is how we are inspired and empowered to follow the Good Shepherd's lead. We know that our shepherd is Christ. He cares for us and about us. He feeds us at his table with his precious food and drink. And he leads us to eternal life by virtue of his own life given for lost, straying, and sinful sheep like you and me. With his staff firmly wrapped around our bodies, minds, and souls, we are safe and secure in his care. No one will snatch us out of his hand. 
not the devil, not the evil powers of this world, and surely not the bad shepherds who seek to rouse our tempers and rile up our emotions. Sure, we can convince ourselves that the world has become a pretty awful place, but the good shepherd will yank us back into the fold and call us to make the world a better place. The good shepherd is more than an image. Indeed, he is the substance of the gospel to us, died and risen for us, and guiding us on his path unto eternal life. Amen. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. In your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, especially Bill, Jeff, and Adam. So come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, remembering Pat, Judy, George, Anne, Erlene, Tim, Loretta, Mike, Ludi, Gary, Olivia, Nanette, Tom, Hale, Dave, Bunny, Shireen, Jane, Eileen, Sharon, Anna, Amelia, Ryan, Sally, Cindy, Terry, Scott, Brenda, Glenda, Bill, Lee, Pam, Viva, Michelle, William, Debbie, Missy, Trista, Paula, John, Melvin, Jennifer, Barbara, Beth, Michaela, 
Libby, the Derry, Kinsel, and Jagger families. We pray for those in the armed forces, Matt, Nate, TJ, Ethan, and Bradley. We pray for licensed and non-parochial clergy in the Diocese of Northern Indiana and for the Anglican Church of Rwanda in the Angl Anglican Cycle of Prayer. We pray for those affected by COVID-19. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. this strange glowing orb in the eastern sky, but it certainly is nice and bright and it feels good to have it here. Also, a welcome and a special blessing to all mothers on this Mother's Day. And if you, like me, live a few miles away from your mom, remember to give her a phone call today. I know I will. And if I were to forget that, I think I would be in trouble. But uh, uh, I would use that as a reminder to all of you if you are in a similar position. I direct your attention to a number of announcements that appear in the bulletin. First of all, we heard a little bit last week from Deb Satterley about our Salvation Army Food Pantry outreach for the month of May. and so. There's information, more information about that on page 17 of the bulletin. And then also registration is open for the diocesan summer youth camp and all youth entering grades three through nine are eligible. And I see we have some young folks here this morning who might be interested in that and eligible. And so I would encourage your participation in that. It is a wonderful program. I, have, I was on staff last year at uh, camp, but I won't be this, this summer, but we'll look forward to 2023, and I think I'll give it another shot. So I think it is a wonderful experience for, for youth, and I, I think it's a very important ministry of our diocese. And plus, you'll get to see kids from all around, from all over the place, including South Bend, Angola, Fort Wayne, uh, uh, Gary, Chicago area, so it, uh, it's, it's really wonderful and I highly encourage your participation. There is a vestry highlight as we have been doing in our bulletins for the last several weeks and 
that is a way that we can highlight various ministries in our, con in our congregation. And this week's highlight is on SAMS and ECW, the St. Anne's Men's Society and the Episcopal Church Women. They do a number of important, important, they fulfill a number of important roles in our congregation, especially with, with regard to reaching out to the community and, uh, and providing assistance and providing scholarships, especially SAMS for people going to college. And they, in this time of year, are most, most involved in the preparation and organization of the annual sale. And we did have a joint SAMS ECW meeting last Thursday. It wasn't very well attended, but I would encourage though in that, in that light to still note that we have sign-up sheets on the, on the table outside the narthex and they are to, to work various shifts during the annual sale, the week, the days leading up to the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in which it is actually held. And so you can put your name down there. And also, we'd like people to wear St. Anne's t-shirts if they're going to be involved in the sale. And there is a sign up for t-shirts. And you can pick v-neck and a couple different colors or regular neck and, and indicate your size. And that's, all, that's all also out on the table in the narthex. OK. I don't have any other announcements to make at this time. I would ask if there are any announcements from the congregation that you uh, bring them to our attention, please. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? Oh. When is your birthday? Today, wow, May 8th. And uh, do, you know all, do you know what else happened on May 8th? Mother's Day, well, and uh, it, it, it may sound like ancient history, but 77 years ago today, the uh, uh, victory was declared in Europe at the end of World War II, so, so victory in Europe, yes. Please join me in praying the birthday blessing. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings and happy birthday. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Anne and all your saints, we may enter with the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break. the communion of the body of Christ. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. One body are we. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to 